Israel Houghton burst onto the gospel music scene 20 years ago with his energized collective, Israel and New Breed. For the Grammy-winning songwriter, musician, and worship leader, it's been pretty much nonstop since, except for the last few years, when personal matters urged Israel to press pause, giving him the space and time to deconstruct and reconstruct his faith and gain a deeper understanding of what it truly means to be a friend of God. Celebrating the release of his new record, Road to Damascus, join us for this conversation with our friend Israel Houghton on CCM Magazine's Features on Film. I'm your host, Andrew Greer. First thing I wanna talk about is the new record's title, Road to Damascus, but the spelling of it, right? D-E-M-A-S-K-U-S, an obvious allusion to Paul's spiritual transformation. Sure. But do you feel like these past few years for you, has that been reflective of that kind of spiritual transformation in your life? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, about three years ago, I was talking to my brother-in-law and he said, so man, how you doing? He kind of knew, obviously, like a lot of changes happened in my life the last several years. And I said, yeah, man, but you know, I feel great. I feel like I've had my own Damascus Road um, experience. And, and he paused and he goes, do you see that? And I said, Damascus, Damascus. Mm -hmm. And it was just, and it mm -hmm. just, then just this whole unraveling of like, what a, what a great sort of um, narrative to the life I've been, you know, living. Previous to taking the mask off was, I'm a Christian, I have a platform, I'm going to carry myself like a super hero Christian mm -hmm, guy, mm -hmm, as opposed to mm -hmm, a human being. Right. And at the time of like, hey, I'm a human and having to like, you know, unveil some of that and, and demask uh -huh. some of that. I think the fear was always, um, yeah, the, your life is over. I mean, we've been in this business a long time. We've seen people go through divorces. Mm -hmm. We've seen the public like forget them, sure. burn their and records. crucify yeah, them exactly. basically, yeah. And so uh -huh. that's always the fear, which is yeah. why you keep the mask on as tight as you can and and post all the right stuff to yeah. let everybody know everything's fine. And you you wear this mask for, for what you feel is protection mm -hmm. and it's actually suffocation. You're suffocating yourself and you're cutting off your oxygen and you're missing out from actually being able to help somebody else. Do you feel like you learned, that? was that like a learned behavior or a learned, you know, is that of something? Of course, yeah. I mean, it's fluent Christianese. It comes with, <laughs> it comes with learning fluent Christianese. Uh -huh. It comes with everything's fine, nothing to see here, God sure. is good. And you just stay active and busy. And you know, a lot of people are none the wiser. And, and in fact, a lot of people could have been none the wiser. I was the one that said, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know what's at stake. I'm, I'm, in, I'm certainly in the zone of losing everything. And in many ways I did. Mm -hmm. But what has come out of that, like this record has been written autobiographically. So it's been looking back over the last eight years and writing from a place of freedom. And uh, it's been cathartic to say the least, but it's been really amazing to see how it's connected with people. Yeah, you, you say you kind of, again, willingly entered into this season or at least into this um, time of transparency mm -hmm. and confession. I've heard you call it a forced sabbatical of mm -hmm. sorts. You know, what do you feel like, what was the point? Where was the fulcrum that forced you into that time of maybe respite and contemplation? Well, there was a there was a five year period of you know my ex and I living on separate mm -hmm. you know separate houses, separate coasts, the whole bit, and um, and just trying to see maybe something good will come out of that. And if anything, if anything, what happened was a further, further drifting away, and finally coming to the realization that like there's no way I'm going to look up ten years from now and still be doing this. Mm. So at some point it's got to be, it's just got to be dealt with. And um, so in, in going into that, like you said, forced sabbatical, it was, um, it was, it, it was not easy to say, hey, this is what's really going on. I knew that there would be a lot of people disappointed because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for what it's worth, I feel like we played that game for almost two decades. The happy marriage, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, and and a lot of people believed it. Yeah. And I think, you know, everybody but me, honestly. Huh. And and so it was it was though it was difficult, it was also the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, I I I I'm sitting here on a on a completely different plane, but like even in those first in those 5 years, I was going through kind of hell on earth and torment and and dealing with all that while everybody's, you know, singing my praises, so to speak. Right, kind of just trucking along. We love Israel. He's anointed, man. Mm -hmm. Please welcome him. He's our family, you know. <laughs> and I'm like dying. Uh -huh. And um, and so by the time all that news is unveiled, I'm healed. Right, you're on. A, you're already. Yeah, but along everybody else journey. is like, I can't believe, you know. Yeah. And then everybody loses your phone number, and you, you know <laughs> all the things you kind of expect to happen. But I, it it baffled people that I was still smiling and yeah. truly living my best life without this this trying to balance a bunch of lies and stuff. But, you, but because you'd already been through that kind of reflective road that led to this restoration and redemption in your own life, even as the news is breaking to everyone else of what first started you down that road, do you feel like that prepared you to um, enter that season of people's criticisms, of people's feedback yeah. with a little more generosity and grace for them and for their comments because you were in a different... Well, I would define generosity and grace as keep your mouth shut. Uh -huh. That was my that was my contribution of uh -huh. generosity and grace not to say anything <laughs> because I feel like had I really started defending and justifying and and pushing back on all the various stuff like the the the, the truth was bad enough then when people started piling on all uh -huh. this other stuff everything in me wanted to yeah. you know fight all that but then I would have been like throwing a lot of other people under the bus uh -huh. so I just kept my mouth shut I don't know how I did that that was the grace of God frankly and I and you know nearly three years later I can look back and go Thank God I kept my mouth shut. Hmm. What kind of mask do you feel like? This This doesn't just have to be reflective of the past few years, but this could be a lifetime. Of course. What kind of mask do you feel like are your more, most intuitive to throw up at any point in time? And and what mask have you felt like you really have let go of yeah. over the course of your lifetime? Uh, I, I had to come to grips with the fact that um, it, as as gregarious and maybe out outgoing I can be I was very very non-confrontational mm. I didn't I didn't like in in my marriage I would never really speak up and go I don't think this is working or I don't think mm -hmm. I like this if anything it was the opposite just nonsense of mm. like no everything's great huh. so you know when that's happening and then both of you are perpetuating everything's great and perpetrating that on stage like you are digging a hole that's mm -hmm. uh, nearly impossible to get out of, and so that mask was was you know the fear of ever really having to deal with anything head on, mm -hmm. um, and I, I I feel like that's the one that I've been able to truly get rid of. Part of that is being married to Adrian now is like she demands like transparency mm -hmm. and and she her barometer for yeah that's not real mm -hmm. is she's a street smart girl from the lower <laughs> east side <of> manhattan <laughs> like she she just can she can she's as street smart and yeah. people smart as you've ever seen and so for her to say you can tell me anything i don't mm -hmm. care how ugly and how horrible it is just as long as it's the truth mm -hmm. don't don't feed me a bunch of you know mm -hmm. oh, everything's fine, I'm fine yeah yeah don't do that and so I, she's really helped me not just demask that but like destroy that mask and that's a certain reflection of what we believe the gospel to believe at least if we believe who jesus is and that he is our friend yeah that he is the way that god has reconciled us to himself through friendship right it's tell me anything it's yeah. there is nothing that can actually separate me from you is that been an experience now in your marriage with Adrienne, of course. Absolutely. She's in the room. So <laughs> you got to say the truth. <laughs> well, it, it, it really has. And and so be, becoming closer to her has has really opened up my my heart and my understanding of how God sees us as well. I've seen a lot of God's grace on my life through her. And uh, that's been, you know, 
revolutionary for me. Mm -hmm. That's been life changing. But um, I uh, I think when you say you know God is our friend, I wrote songs about that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I I've sung that. I've sung nothing will separate me from the love of God. And yet, if you're raised in an environment where you are deathly afraid of God, and you believe that any calamitous thing that happens mm -hmm. is God's punishment, as opposed to just life happens, man. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and and sort of having to question, do I believe that nothing will separate me from the mm. love of God? That's been like the biggest and most beautiful experience through this whole thing is God truly is good. He truly is faithful. And I've come to really, really understand that. It seems like a reorientation of perspective. When I, I was thinking about as I was listening down to the new record mm -hmm. and just the themes of not hiding, of not retreating, of being honest and out in the open, and that um, still being a point of reception, maybe the point of reception of God's love for us, believing that we are loved, to be honest with God, to be received in that transparency, is, is to be opened up to what true love could be. But we always talk, or at least growing up in the church, I always received this message of, you seek God, right? Have your quiet time, do this, do this, mm -hmm. do this, do that. And I do believe that we put ourselves forth in the effort. But what I heard throughout this record and what I seem to be hearing even now is this idea that God is, it, forget it, God is pursuing 100%, you. 100%, man, 100%. You. I, you know, there's this, there's this thought of, I fell from grace and we've heard it. It's, mm -hmm. it's become part of, you know, historic vernacular. Oh, he had a fall from grace. And I've come to understand that I fell into grace. Hmm. And, and possibly for for the first time that I was aware that I have I never landed and smashed on the ground I landed in his arms and um, and to be able to turn that around maybe lyrically you know musically and help somebody understand that 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 God you know I I see Liam Neeson now you know I see Explain. I see Taken I okay. see God okay. going. I have a certain set of skills, man, and I am going to use these skills to reach my child however, and there's nothing that's going to stop me. That's why Reckless Love kind of drove this record mm. because that imagery, that lyric, you know, that lyric of just like there's nothing you won't do to to capture my heart, to to chase me down and rescue me. Mm -hmm. And that does that does change a, the narrative a bit of God, I'm just seeking you. Teach me how to trust you. Mm. Oh, you know, mm. and that striving, which you know, I, I, I'm with you. There's a good side to like devotion and like mm -hmm. a sense of like I, I want this to be routine in the best possible mm -hmm. way. But that idea, because that the converse of that idea was like, and if I miss a day, oh man, right. I'm right. cut off. Yeah, he's know? gone. He's gone, yeah. and yeah. I'm gonna have to search high and low to find <laughs> him again. Meanwhile. Right. Like we 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 believed this misnomer that if I fall, that has suddenly negated God's ability to be omnipresent uh -huh, anymore, uh -huh. and that's just not true. It's impossible. We don't have that kind of power. My my failure and my you know finiteness cannot overpower the power of the cross. It just can't, and it just never will. Hmm. And so resting in that, man, it's. It's, like I said earlier, man, it's revolutionary for me. You've been a part of, in leadership, in your songs, and you've participated in some of the biggest churches, largest churches and congregations in the world. And I think about this, I'm hearing this kind of deconstruction and reconstruction of faith, or at least your perspectives on faith. How does church now play into that? The same, you know, I'll call it the organization yeah. instead of, maybe what an Acts church is, but the organization of church in our world today, how that played into these original perspectives and these ideas that, hey, you know, you don't pursue God hard enough or you don't do the mm -hmm. right things. God's going to lead you now to believe something different, to have a shift in that. How does a church play into your life, do you feel like? Well, for the first time in a long time, we got to just attend a church. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like not VIP church either. Like we just show up, we park, <laughs> and we come to church. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to just sit on the whatever row is available and to just sense God's presence, man. And 
and it not be about what's the next song, how are we going to transition into this next thing? So I think you could do the work of the Lord and not even really know the Lord of the work mm -hmm. for a long time. And I had to look up and realize, man, like, I'm not sure I've, I've had a real, like, Jesus encounter mm -hmm. without, you know, having to engage other parts of my brain and, and instincts about, okay, the service is happening. We need the light cue to happen. We sure. Need, those lyrics sure. weren't up fast enough, you know, yeah, and, sure. and it's like you're, you're, you're still disconnected from that. So I think, I think that's played a big part for me though. It's like finding the Jesus of the church, not, mm. not, not the church of mm -hmm. Jesus. I, mm -hmm. and I, does that make sense? I know yeah. it's coming across like I'm trying to be clever, but like really knowing Jesus yeah. as opposed to depending on the church experience to have that encounter. Well, the church is built on Jesus. Yeah. So to know Jesus is to then understand perhaps what the church looks like. Yeah, and I've heard you talk about that business and commerce of the church and yeah. how, you know, there's a lot of people in, in our world today. It's a big business. I mean, and, and I don't know that I have any issue with that. With, I think pastors should be paid well because they sure are spending a lot of time away from their families, et cetera. And so it's not a comment on that, yeah. but it is an interesting dynamic, right? To be, to try to be a participant in the church as, again, finding Jesus and understanding what the church is and also potentially finding our profession. I mean, but do you think you'll my, ever do my that wife, again? My wife hassles me all the time. Okay. She's like, I praise God every day. Nobody's paying me to praise God. <laughs> I'm not on anybody's yeah. salary to praise God. Uh -huh. you know? So the idea of being a professional uh, you know, this is my profession. Sure. I do worship uh -huh. is baffling to a young girl who grew up in the assembly of God, you know, uh -huh. Pentecostal, uh, Spanish assembly, yeah, right. Yeah, of yeah, New York yeah, city. Yeah, yeah. Right? Everyone like, was who, a worshiper what? We, yeah. we volunteer. We're here 18 hours a day. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, so like I, I'm enjoying, I mean, granted, I, I've been doing this 28 years, uh -huh. like as a, like, paid employee of something, you uh -huh. know, and like I've, I've been a part of seeing the commerce uh -huh. of worship uh -huh. grow exponentially. I, I don't throw rocks at that parade. Uh -huh. I, I appreciated being in that parade and I appreciate that, you know, I, I agree with you. Like if you're, if you're sacrificing me and pulled away for the sake of the gospel, you know, it, it, I have no problem with somebody doing that well and making a good and living. Having compensation, doing right. Yeah. yeah. However, if that's my identity and if that is my chase and if that is my fuel, like how much is this going to net me, then I feel like I'm already missing the point. Yeah, yeah. And that has been a fine uh, fight for me, just like figuring it out. And, and I'm, I, I feel like I'm always going to err on the side of generosity in the sense of like, it's not, it's not going to be my drive. And if I receive anything in excess... I'm going to make sure that I'm found sure. giving that to, you know, sure. where it needs to go. But um, I, the best way I can say it is I love the local church. I love uh -huh. what she stands for. And I'm always going to be a part of the local church. I love the worship um, component of uh -huh. church. But at the same time, like I'm loving just being a Christian, not a professional one. So if you now... Had to, if someone came up to you and said, what is your identity? Israel, what is your identity? Last I checked, I'm a friend of God. And I'm, and I'm Adrian's husband. And I've got some great kids who love me. And I've got a few friends that I feel like, if they had to, would step in front of a bus for me. And mm -hmm. I would do the same for them. And man, therefore, I'm wealthy. Therefore, life is, is good. Um, I, nowhere in there is I won this many awards and sold this many records and did this many. That's just like, that's, that's empty when it's all said and done. Because if, if, if the motivation for getting all that is jacked up, then, mm. then the, the trophy is like, it's, 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 it's a, it's a doorstop, mm -hmm. you know, when it's all said and done. So having that 
perspective change and just what matters, what gets me out of bed in the mm -hmm. morning. Let me pursue that. And uh, I'm enjoying that part of it a lot. I'm gonna trust you. 